Hey fellas, welcome to what's probably going to be the most exciting video I've ever put out on YouTube. And we're going to be discussing acrylic rods. Yes, that's right. Now, now that uh, I've I'm, I'm got my bench cleared and I don't have any builds to do uh, that I'm commissioned to do, uh, I get to do whatever I want. So <laughs> I've had a lot of requests. This is probably the most request topic that I've gotten and people have asked me to cover are the acrylic rods that I use for my bases, like on this uh, shark. And then uh, here's one. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I build a lot of planes in flight and I like to mount those on a wooden base with an acrylic rod. And sometimes I have to bend the rod like you see here. This one wasn't really done that well. I did a long time ago. But I do get a lot of people asking me, hey, you know, how do you bend the acrylic rod? Where do you get it? All those kind of things. So I figure I would cover that uh, here in this video. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, this is stupid. Uh, I ain't going to watch this. That, that's fine. But uh, hopefully uh, I won't get any more questions about acrylic rods. I can explain everything there is to know about uh, at least everything that I know about acrylic rods and how I use them in this video. So... Hope you enjoy it. All right, so let's take a look at the clear acrylic rods that I use. Now, the reason that I like to use these instead of say like a wooden dowel rod or a metal tube is because they're less conspicuous, obviously being clear, than either of those other two options. Plus, these are really easy to bend. You just gotta heat them up and you can manipulate them and bend them in any shape that you want, which uh, you know we'll talk about here and I'll show you, I'll demonstrate how I do that here in, in, in a few minutes. Um, now, I get these on either eBay or Amazon. Just look up clear acrylic rod. Now, the ones that I typically get are 12 inches in length. Uh, some of these other ones that are smaller, I think, are about uh, you know, 10 inches or so. But typically, you can, I think you can get them in longer lengths, but I'm sure they're more expensive. But the 12-inch, I've, I've, uh, I've never ran into an issue where I needed anything longer than 12 inches. That's what she said. <laughs> uh. Now, I've got the biggest ones that I've got here. These are, I believe, a half an inch in diameter. So we'll get my caliper out. You can see. These are... Yeah, half an inch in diameter. I've got some... Um, I rarely use the half inch diameter ones. I mean, these are pretty thick. Uh... I think the only time I've ever used these are like on really big 30-second scale planes, like the 30-second uh, scale B-17, maybe the B-25, and, um, you know, a couple of the other real big 30-second scale planes. The um, For most of my 30-second scale planes, I use the 3 8 inch ones, which are pretty thick and pretty sturdy. Um... Some of my smaller 32nd scale and larger 48th scale, I'll use the quarter inch round ones. So they're a little bit smaller. And some of my, and, and for most of my smaller 48, 48 inch or 48th scale planes, I'm having a hard time talking, I use these 1 8 inch diameter rods. And these are pretty small. And I like to use the smallest possible, but will uh, a rod that will still, um, uh, hold up the plane. I mean, I don't want it bouncing around, and uh, but I, I do want the smallest possible, just so it's uh, not as conspicuous. Obviously, I don't want to take a, a 48 scale prop plane like a you know a BF 109 and put this big thing into it, which is basically the diameter of the fuselage. Uh, I want to use the smallest one possible. So for say like a small, um, I'm kind of working on this. Asagawa BF-109 right now. So I would want to use something like this, this 1 8 inch. That would be plenty enough to hold it up and, uh, and not have any issues. So now that we got that out of the way, we'll uh, go to the craft bench in the other room and I'll show you how I heat them up and bend them like that. It's kind of a different view, isn't it, guys? 
So we're at the craft bar, and what I've got here, this is a heat gun I got at Walmart for like 20 bucks. It's got two settings, it's got low and high. I typically like to use the high heat settings. I've got my acrylic rods, and then I made up this jig. It's just a board with a bunch of equidistant holes that I drilled in them, and then I put some dowel rods in here. Now, this is really handy for if I wanna make uh, two different dowel rods that are bent in about the same shape. It's, it's kind of hard to do without this. I mean, I've, I've done it before, but uh, like with my F14 Tomcats, uh, I do have like two rods that go into the exhaust, and I like to have them typically bent about the same shape. So this really helps me to do that, and I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. Uh, before I, I built this, uh, what I typically used was like different size glasses. I can, uh, once, I, once I heat up the acrylic rod, I can set it down and then I can bend it around the shape of whatever size glass that I have, and I can get some shapes that way. And some of my bigger pieces, like something like this, where I just want a straight bend, I really, I'm not really concerned about the overall shape. If I just want to bend it a little bit, I'll just heat it up and just bend it by hand. So uh, I've got my heat gun here. I've already got it warmed up a little bit and I've got it on high heat. I'll take my acrylic rod and what I like to do is I keep it about two to three inches away and I'm constantly turning the rod. Now, if I want to say I want to bend this at a 45 degree angle and I want the bend to be about here. Okay, I don't, just don't want to just heat up this spot right here. What I want to do is I want to heat up a spot about that big. So um, just because, you know, the, the way this bends, if, if uh, the, the center is really hot and the outside isn't, it's, it's not going to bend really well. So I want to heat up a bigger area than what uh, that I intend to bend. Okay, so I'm going to hold this on high heat. And this is, I think, a quarter inch acrylic rod. I'm going to hold about two to three inches. I'm going to consistently turn the rod with my hands. One thing I don't want to do is keep this on here in one spot. Because what's going to happen, and I'll show you this here in a minute, it's going to melt the plastic in one spot and it's going to start to bubble and create air bubbles on the inside. So I'm constantly turning it. And a lot of times when I, after I've been heating this for a little bit, I'll turn it on its side and I can tell when it starts to soften by when it starts to bend. So about two to three inches. Back and forth, never keeping the heat gun in, on one spot for any length of time. And the key to this is just be patient with it. Again, you don't want to heat it up too fast. You want to gradually heat it up until it starts to, starts to soften. Now I can tell it's starting to bend a little bit. As I'm turning it, you can see that starting to bend. As long as I gradually heat this up, I shouldn't have a problem with air bubbles. Now this piece that I have, it's kind of all scratched up anyway, so you're not going to be able to... It's going to look like I'm messing it up, but it's, it's already scratched up and messed up, so... I'm not seeing any new air bubbles, okay? Now this should be... You can see how well that bends. Now it's going to stay like this for a little bit, okay? So I'll move the camera and I'll show you how I bend this. All right. So now that I've got this heated up, I can take this, I can sit on my jig, and if I want to bend something at like a 45 degree angle, I can do this. Or say if I want to bend it at like maybe a 90 degree angle. You can see some of this gets a little, little deformed right about here. Just kind of hold it. Now one thing you don't want to do is press down on the area that's really hot because you can deform the plastic a little bit if you do that and give it like a flat spot. Okay. And say if I want to see how it's kind of like uh, not really that good right there. 
I'm not really happy with that. So what I can do is I can come in and just heat that part up. Just heat that little section up right there. come and straighten it out just a little bit I've been bending and messing with this rod and then uh, it's not wasn't perfectly straight to begin with but there you go that's how I bend my acrylic rods now say if I wanted to do a glass do it around a glass keep this back up again all right so say you don't want to go to the trouble of making a jig, just take a glass and then you can just shape it around the glass. Just like so. Pull it just a little bit and then you can get your curve that way. Okay. And that's as simple as that. If I wanted to get a smaller curve, you can see this is starting to, to get stiff. So what I can do is just come in here and heat it back up again. And my tabletop is, is a little, uh, a little chilly. The temperature is uh, a lot colder on the tabletop. So when this gets there, it tends to tends to a, uh, cool down a lot quicker than if it's not touching the table. All right. You can see there's some scratches and cracks in there. It's because I've been messing with this and I've, I've sanded the, I've sanded my tube. Now, we'll take this acrylic rod here and I'll show you what happens whenever you Stay on one spot too long. Now I've got it about an inch away. And I'm heating it up. And we'll start to see air bubbles. Or the plastic's melting and it is it is uh bending it but you're getting all kinds of air bubbles in there right there <laughs> so that's staying in one spot too long it sure does uh sure does uh, soften it but you also burn the plastic and it starts to create these bubbles in it so that's why you gotta stay about two to three inches away and slowly heat it up and uh, heat it up gradually. Otherwise, you're gonna run into issues like that. Okay, so let's talk about how I cut it. Now, you can use a Dremel tool with like a cutoff wheel and cut it, but it does melt the plastic really quickly. And uh, you know, if you got one and you wanna do it really quickly, just use a Dremel tool. I typically just use like a razor saw and I'll just, uh, it doesn't take too long. I'll just cut it to length with a razor saw like so and it doesn't take too long I have used snippers for like the uh, the thinner diameter acrylic rods but uh, I don't recommend using it because it can crack and break where you don't want it to and it doesn't take long with a razor saw and as you can see here like that okay now what I like to do because it's got this uh, this uh, sharp edge on it what I'll typically do is I'll, I'll grab a file and I'm just gonna go along and especially when I when I put it into the wooden base those uh, sharp edges on the edge seem to snag in the in the holes on my wooden base so I like to file the edges down and then round it off with a sanding sponge so it goes in a little smoother into the wooden base and, and into the plane. 
and I'll do this on both ends. Okay, and then I'll just take like a 220 grit and I'll just smooth it out. Just like so. I didn't get that straight of a cut, but I'm not too concerned about it for demonstration purposes. But then I've got a nice rounded, rounded end that's not going to be snagging on my, uh, in the hole. So uh, that's all I can think of to cover on these uh, acrylic rods. I hope that answers everybody's questions that has sent me questions about this. And again, you can find these on eBay or Amazon. Just search a clear acrylic rod. And they do come in different lengths and different uh, diameters. So I uh, hope that answers your questions. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next episode.